Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to today's video. This is review of Dell Wise 5070. This is a small PC, miniature PC. And uh, you can see in this video, in this picture, the size is just very small size. And uh, if I compare with a regular and you can well imagine this is a very small machine and uh, this is actually it's like a laptop board and processor without any screen or the keyboard very small size so this machine has got a pentium silver processor in it uh, this is a quad core processor the number is J5005 and it was launched in December 2007, 4 MB of cache. The base speed is 1.5 gigahertz and it can go up to 2.8 gigahertz and it's a 14 nm. Uh, that's the uh, assembly power point and uh, this processor consumes a TDP of power of 10 watt only. So this is amazing. 10 watts is amazing. And uh, this is the processor data I got from CPU Z software. And uh, you can see when the it was uh, checked, uh, it was nearly 2700 megahertz processor was it's a four core processor and uh, four megabytes of cache level two cache and level one are like. 22 and 32 kilobytes only. So this is good enough. Uh, is it good enough? Let's see. Uh, this uh, processor obviously has a built-in uh, GPU also, which is a UHD. And the important point what I want to make is that this is a UHD GPU, and this is that X12 compatible. So best you can read. OpenGL 4.4 and CL 1.2 and definitely, definitely, this is not a gaming uh, uh, GPU. This is uh, working for office work and other things. And uh, this uh, system can support up to three monitors. Mine support up to two. Maybe it's also support third one. I have never tried it. So let's see. And uh, maybe you are thinking that uh, it's uh, because it's a graded uh, 2017 model processor. Maybe Zoom is able to remove the background without green screen. The answer is no. Zoom still needs a green screen to remove the background. Uh, let's talk about RAM. Uh, this is the Dell website says that it can support up to. 8 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, uh, there are two slots uh, and it supports DDF4 2400 megahertz. So when uh, I bought this PC, it came with a DDF4 4 gigabytes of RAM that was 2133 megahertz. So you can see that it's running almost the same speed. And we understand that because this is the RAM, uh, the bandwidth is 2133, but uh, the frequency is shown half of the actual frequency being used. So uh, 2133, this is the almost uh, say, uh, maximum speed of RAM that is being utilized. And the, the user manual says that uh, this system supports up to 24 megahertz. Okay, but then uh, on one side, I read that uh, this system also support uh, 8 gigabytes of RAM modules. So I bought one DDR4 8 gigabyte uh, of 2666 megahertz and put it in the system and surprisingly it was accepted and now my system has 12 megabytes of gigabytes of RAM. So I think if I have the two modules 8 gigabytes each so i can go up to 16 gigabytes so this is something with the manual says uh, the system supports up to 8 but uh, in my experience it can go up to 
16 gig gigabytes of RAM. And you can see that this is two triple triple six, uh, and the frequency is one triple three. So I don't know how because uh, my uh, my experience is that uh, the computer uh, uh, turns down the frequency and matches it with the lowest RAM. Uh, but here, slot one is at two uh, one triple double three, and this is two triple six. Anyways, so this is something. Uh, same thing on RAM. Let's talk about the storage spaces, how much uh, storage spaces you can have. Uh, this system sports uh, SATA SSD, right? This is the old uh, uh, SSD, not the current NVMe. Uh, we used to call it NGFF. And uh, this uh, is SATA SSD. We need to understand that this is not NVMe. So, uh, the form is M.2. And uh, when I look at the speeds, it can give me up to 554.9 megabytes per second. The read speed for it. So, principally, this is SATA 3 uh, SSD. So, but interestingly, uh, this is not only the SSD. Or the storage available there is built-in 16 gigabytes of emmc flash and it is soldered on the board i think this is the one because the, this says inex and there is that so i think this is the chip for uh, 16 uh, gigabytes of ram and this is soldered on the chip and uh, when i check a speed this is uh, sata 2 compatible it scores up to like 298 megabytes per second maximum speed I could get and so so uh, the uh, SSD it can it is SATA 3 compatible the built-in uh, EMC EMMC flash is SATA 2 compatible and then I just thought actually can this system handle an NVMe SSD so we have uh, PCIe slot, I think this is mini PCIe or maybe some something else and uh, this is used for Wi-Fi card. So I I had this um, King Specs NVMe uh, 2242 size. So I tried to put it in uh, because this slot is 2230. So this is a bit um, bigger than the the desired the size of the board sport but so just because i have to try it, it so i put it and maybe you can see this is a better picture so i have had to put a tissue paper under it just to test it out and this is not actually um, parallel to the board so this is a bit uh, slightly slanting upwards it cannot fit properly but it runs Okay, so I am I'm, I have to use this uh, adapter with my NVMe because uh, uh, this is M2 key A slash E to M.2 NVMe. So I have to uh, use this adapter. And uh, after this adapter, my motherboard uh, was able to pick up this SSD, but uh, the speeds I were able to get was 411 megabytes of RAM. I was hoping that uh, I will able to get uh, speed of PCI 3 uh, X1, but the speeds uh, I'm getting is like PCI 2 X1. So the speeds are, the, the random 4K uh, speeds are very good, but again, uh, this is uh, PCIe and the SSD doesn't fit properly. It, this was just a test that I, whether or not this will uh, this will support it. So it will support it. Just in case, if you want to have a their SSD, so you, so you can use this one also. Okay. Now look at the ports. Lots of lots of ports we have. On the front side, uh, this is optional uh, uh, card readers, uh, but uh, we have this audio out, audio in out, and then we have this Type C. 
and uh, then we have one USB 3.2 and two USB 2.0 and, and this one is powered this one is powered and uh, on the back side we have an audio in out I don't have this uh, antenna jacks uh, I do have a serial port and I do have these four USB 3.2 ports and I have these two and not three uh, uh, the third one is uh, optional but I have this two uh, principally uh, display ports I have this uh, RJ45 I don't have this VJ so there, there are lots lots of uh, ports available and especially USB there are lots of USBs available and e e still you have uh, an option of uh, uh, more adding more USBs through the board clap. Okay, so uh, this is this connects with the adapter. Uh, uh, one thing before I talk about adapter, the uh, Type C USB is EM with power delivery and display flow port on the front side. So this so Type C USB can also act as a display port. And uh, this uh, system also has an internal business audio speaker, which is quite good, quite quite uh, loud and clear. Somehow, somehow, I was unable to use the Wi-Fi card. I don't know why. I don't know uh, uh, why. Uh, the problem is the card got detected, and as soon as the drivers are installed, the card. Is no more there. So this is something uh, the Wi-Fi card. I am unable to resolve this issue. If I um, able to, I am able to resolve this issue. I will leave it in the description. But so far, I am unable I, uh, unable to use this card. I am using a USB Wi-Fi adapter. So about the power adapter, this is an external 65 watt power adapter, which is good enough. It's just like uh, as I said earlier, a laptop without keyboard and the monitor, so it uses a small external adapter. So the system comes with uh, Windows 10 IoT. Uh, you can download uh, this from the Dell website also, but I upgraded it to uh, Windows 11, and uh, Windows 10 IoT license was, uh, I, I'm not sure it was, because I uh, bought a used system, so I don't know whether there was a license of Windows IoT, Windows 10 IoT uh, with this uh, system or not. But my machine was not uh, able to get automatic register with Microsoft. So I bought a license and uh, then I'm using this system. And this is perfectly, uh, this device is perfectly win working with Windows 11. No issues. And I also read this uh, review uh, available at Cora, and uh, it is very helpful. And as you, see, you can read that this is not recommended for modern games, obviously, but this everyone is you know praising it. This is a very good machine. If you don't want to uh, go for video games or computer games so this is a very good system uh, i am using this system for ip camera monitoring uh, i have used the blue stack the android emulator on it it is quite good enough it runs without any flaws uh, and youtube videos you can see microsoft office is fine zoom videos you can do it only recommendation is that you improve, you should have good RAM. Like uh, I added this 8 GB module, I now have total uh, 12 uh, GB of RAM. So if you maybe you can have 16. Uh, but uh, the processor is quite powerful. Uh, the quad core uh, for not for gaming, not for heavy stuff, no for 3D uh, programming, uh, uh, designing, or anything like that. But for daily tasks, like uh, if you want to uh, use it for Office Word, uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, um, you want to see uh, you surfing, you want to do some natural thing, you want to see some video, 
uh, or and even the zoom meetings i have attached a usb video camera and it works fine with that also so it's a green star good star from a big star from my side it's a non non gaming pc you can use it and uh, i totally recommend that uh, if uh, like this is this is so small this is so small that uh, uh, you can um, attach with your uh, uh, maybe television instead of having a dedicated monitor for that you can put it somewhere besides your tv set and uh, you can use wireless keyboard and mouse and this is so small that this actually looks good so i hope that uh, this video will be helpful for some and um, and i bought the second hand so it is very cheap also so if you are planning to buy a pc a value pc uh, and you don't want to do uh, any gaming this is one of the very good choices i came across and i'm using it bye for now